and welcome to Epithetic Cacti. Today let's take a look at the Oporo cactus species Flagrelliformis. Now this was not so long ago reclassified and from Oporo cactus into the genus Dysocactus and then back into the genus Oporo cactus. So there are only two species in this genus, Flagrelliformis and Martianus. This species is endemic to Mexico and according to the IUCN redlist.org site, this species is near threatened and its population is decreasing. Now, one of the interesting things about this particular species, when you see them growing in the wild, they are not always growing epithetically. Sometimes they're growing on the ground, they're crawling across rocks. What that indicates is, is a highlight plant that does not require as much water as some of your other Daiso cactus species. When I very first started growing these, I really kind of struggled with them a little bit, I think for that reason. You know, I, I was trying to grow them in the same way that I was growing my Daiso cactus and I just was not having the most luck. Plus it is very difficult to grow these in a place that does not have high quality light. So an appropriately long day length, as well as warmer temperatures, and a very strong sort of light source. This is a plant that can absolutely and totally be grown in full sun. If it's not grown in the appropriate amount of light, what will happen is that these branches will start to become thinner. So when I initially started growing this species, I did not have adequate indoor lighting. Even if I was to put it in a south facing window, I would get skinnier sections on the branches whenever they were moved indoors. They do wonderfully under the grow lights. You can see that there is not any real etiolation. There is new growth that's growing up here that looks nice and thick and plump. And you can also see that it's blooming. So this guy is blooming in my basement. It bloomed in my basement last year as well. You can see there's more buds forming. And as this plant gets older and, you know, the more light it's exposed to, the more and more and more it will bloom. But actually this plant, I believe, is about three years old. It might even be going on four. So I've had this for a long time and I grew it from just a little teeny tiny thing. You know, something that I ordered, I think, off of probably kind of more of a house plantish type store in the United States it was not very expensive. That's the thing about this particular species, too, is that even though it's a species that is, you know, near threatened and its population is declining and everything, in terms of it being grown as a house plant, it's been a house plant for a long, long time. So this is widely cultivated and not very hard to get a hold of. I'm pretty sure that a lot of places like maybe Logie's Greenhouse and stuff like that would honestly offer this in the United States. It also has spines, bristles, all down these stems. So they are kind of painful. They are a little bit more hair-like when they actually get into your skin. It is very difficult to get them out. One of the larger issues that I've had with growing these particular species has to do with pests. So it has to do with getting the, them getting mealybugs and then, you know, really struggling to get rid of the mealybugs. However, you know, if you do get mealybugs, your best bet is honestly just spray those buggers down with alcohol. You can put the plant in the shower and wash as many of them as you can off and then spray it down with some alcohol. At least these plants, you wanna be very careful because not all plants will re react well to alcohol. Any hybrid with any kind of a poro cactus in its genetics, a little bit tougher to grow. The way that I grow them, generally full sun, and I grow them in smaller pots. And the reason why I grow them in smaller pots is because they generally need a whole lot less water than my Daiso cactus hybrids do. The biggest risk that you're gonna face when you grow these guys is you're going to rot them because they're overwatering them. They're not desert cacti. So you can't just not water them for months and months. You, you can just get away with not watering them anywhere near as much as the Daiso cactus hybrids. So those are kind of the secrets that I found. I've got some that are growing in the tiniest little pots and have been growing in those tiny little pots for two years and they don't need to be repotted anytime soon. So they really don't have these big robust root systems. I still grow them in the same media that I grow everything else. I just adjust the pot and then I adjust the watering. Why don't we zoom in and take kind of a closer look at these flowers? There, they're absolutely beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful little flowers. 
Um, and honestly, they're not, they're not really as small as a person might think. I think they look kind of small because it's these large trailing plants, but they're not really as small as you might think. So you can see what I mean by they're not really totally symmetrical. They're more symmetrical only on one plane. So if I was to cut this in half, it would be symmetrical down one plane, but it definitely would not be symmetrical if I tried to cut it in half the short way this way. So that is something to note about them. They're absolutely just really beautiful. And I kind of really love that color. I always get really excited when I see these guys bloom and I always feel a little bit more accomplished because they are in fact harder to bloom. You can see that they have a rather kind of furry or fuzzy sort of base to their ovary. You can see the petals are pretty skinny here, these back petals, and they run all the way down the tube. So they're not just up here, they really run all the way down the tube, curling backwards. And then when you get up here, you can see that there is a sort of concentration of those petals, the most inner petals, and they're a little bit wider. This one does have a very small sort of darker mid-stripe that runs through the petals. You can see it there. It's still really just a much darker fuchsia. It's really kind of a fuchsia throughout here. I think these species are really rewarding to grow. Both of them are. Marcianus is really, really rewarding to grow as well because like I said, it is a little bit harder to bloom, a little bit harder care. So if you're, you know, looking for something that maybe is a little bit more difficult to grow, this might be a good bet. And by difficult, I think, I think difficult is a little bit subjective here because I'm a heavy waterer. I can grow, you know, the reason why I can grow epiphytic plants pretty well is because I am a heavy waterer and I, I just grow them in the right media and I have a heavy hand at watering. So I think that this is difficult for me to grow. So if you're a little bit of a heavy waterer, it might be difficult for you to grow. I think if you're a light waterer, the Daiso cactus might be a little bit harder for you to grow. This is a plant too. It just gets more and more and more beautiful with age. You know, as it gets older, it just creates more and more and more of these just gorgeous, elegant branches. Just really, really fun, beautiful, and rewarding to grow. I hope that you've enjoyed taking a look at Aporo cactus flagrilliformis with me. Thank you for watching and happy cacti growing.